How many here have had plantar fasciitis? Hurts like heck, doesn't it? So when you have this, this fire, this fascia that ignites in the bottom of your foot, um, it, it's crazy, crazy painful. And let's talk about that a bit. You know, I was back in college, and back when I was in school many, many years ago, <laughs> we had these things called Spiri Topsiders, and they're actually back in, in style again. They're these boat shoes that are a moccasin that have a white rubber bottom and a leather top that's actually hand-sewn, and they look really cool. And of course, because they're cool, I had to wear them every day in the summertime. And so I wore them every day. I could only afford one pair. My rich friends could afford the powder blue and the pink and the green. Of course, it was the 80s, so. But these shoes were really cool, and I wore them every day. And after about a month, my right heel started to hurt a little bit. And about a week later, it started to hurt some more. And about a week after that, suddenly I'm starting to favor my foot. And then a week after that, I was limping. I thought, oh, dear God, really? So I went to my doctor, and I said, my foot's just killing me. He looks down at my feet, and he asked me a question that I've asked many clients since as a therapist, and that is, wear those same shoes every day, do you? I said, yeah. He says, let me see your shoe. And I hand him the shoe. He goes, you see that seam that's inside? I said, yeah. He goes, you see that little tiny little knot at the very bottom? I said, yeah. He goes, that's your problem. I said, I'm not a wuss. He says, no. That little irritation every single day, irritating your foot causes the bone to grow back against that. And it's creating a heel spur. He says, you need to mix it up. Every single day, your foot needs a different impetus, a different input irritation, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, on your foot. You need to have that difference so your foot doesn't try to adapt to a constant regularity and create that heel spur. So the heel spur is not plantar fasciitis, but plantar fasciitis can come oftentimes from the heel spur, and the heel spur can, they can both cause each other. So if you have tight plantar fasciitis, you have fascia that's just ignited, it's, on, it's tightened up, and it's pulling on the bone, the calcaneus bone, a heel spur can grow and respond to that. But a heel spur can ignite the fascia and the inflammation as well. So they kind of often are both there simultaneously. So how do you get that to go away? Well, it's one of the things that I say you have to make worse to make better, and that is to stretch out the fascia of the foot, elongate the tissues, make them move, and then deal with the inflammation as well. But get them moving. We use, actually use a ball, we call it affectionately Bob's Ball of Pain, and we stand on that ball and stretch out the fascia, and there's some actually manual techniques that we'll show you with, uh, with knuckles and uh, elbow as well, but you want to lengthen those, those, those tissues. But how do you prevent that, and how do you make it go away? Well, on a healthy person who's not you know, 85, 95 years old, when you're a healthy person, your body's functioning normally, with enough hydration and enough calcium, which sounds odd, you can reabsorb your bone as long as the irritation goes away. So let's say you're, you know, you're working in a very expensive $600 pair of steel toe, steel shank boots, and you can't afford two pair of boots. You want to change the impetus in that shoe and the irritation. So maybe one day you're going to wear a pair of Dr. Scholl's insoles. Next day you're going to wear a pair of hiking socks. Next day you're going to wear your, your orthotic. You want to change up the feel so your foot never feels the same sensation two days in a row. That's a cheaper way than buying multiple pairs of boots. That's really important. But to help it absorb, a doctor will often refer you to or tell you to buy a, what's called a, a heel cup. And that heel cup, when you're standing and looking at your shoe or your heel naked, oh, look how pretty my heel is, right? When you're standing on the floor with no shoes on, barefoot, from behind, you have an elephant's foot. That fat pad goes and squishes outward, and it's protecting the calcaneus bone. The heel cup squishes that fat pad together, doubles your own fat pad, doubles the thickness of protection, and allows the bone to reabsorb from lack of irritation. So the heel cup's really good. Also, if you have plantar fasciitis, the worst time of day is the morning. You get out of bed in the morning, you step on there, and it just burns as you step on that. So all night long, you didn't realize this, but all of you sleep like ballet dancers. Didn't know that, did you? So as you lay there in bed, your toes are pointing. And so you're shortening your plantar fascia all night long. You step out of bed in the morning, and it just tears it out. So to keep that from happening, you can get something called a plantar fasciitis boot. They're very attractive. And so basically, it's a boot that holds your foot in place. And they've got one by a couple of different companies. They're more rugged styles, and they've got ones that are uh, more of a soft material with a strap. But if you can't afford that, you always can use duct tape and a sock. Just kidding. Anyway, the point is you want to stretch out that fascia all night. So the first thing in the morning when you stand on the ground, that's going to make a difference. Yep. So when a doctor says to get a bottle of water and to freeze it and to roll your foot over that, it's a great idea. But if you do it and you freeze your foot into place, when you roll your foot over a bottle of water, you're really shortening that plantar fascia. So you're actually <laughs> shortening it into a shortened, or you're freezing it into a shortened position. Then you stand on it, tear it out again. So if you're going to do that, it's a great idea. Put the kids to bed, brush your teeth, get a drink of water, go pee. <laughs> Sit in the edge of your bed, roll your feet on the bottle, and then lay back and go to, go to sleep. If you need to walk on your feet, try to wait at least a half an hour to allow that foot to warm back up naturally and allows that to, to get better, you know, natural temperature before you walk on it. That's a good technique. It's, it, it helps quite a bit.